What kind of UI patterns should you use in your next mobile or desktop interface project? Well, how about these five? All right, the first UI pattern we're gonna be talking about is the good old checkbox. It serves us well, it does so much. These are the checkboxes. They allow users to select one of multiple options from a list and each checkbox tends to operate individually. When you check a checkbox, it marks it in with a little check mark and it indicates that that thing is done or selected and they are commonly found in databases or form fields or onboardings. We're just selecting, these are selected, these are not selected. Here's another good example of some checkboxes. They don't have to be boxes, they could be check circles. Really, you find these in to-do items and task lists all the time. It's just you checking things off and saying that thing is either done or it's active or I have selected it. The next UI pattern that we're gonna be talking about is the kebab menu pattern. That's right, I said it, kebab. Maybe you've heard of a meatball menu. That's these three little circles or ellipses that are stacked horizontally. Well, the kebab is gonna actually literally turn that on its head. It's gonna stack them vertically. These three dots indicate that there's a set of grouped options inside of a modal box. Um, it's very popular inside of mobile applications. You can see some implementations of a kebab menu here. We have the kebab over here on the right-hand side, actually kind of replacing the meatball menu. And then we have some on each of these line items in this application. It just says there's more here than meets the eye. Click on this and you'll get options that directly relate to the line item or area that you clicked on. Next up is the tab bar, or as you might know it, the tab bar navigation or the bottom navigation. That's right, the tab bar navigation usually appears at the bottom, although at times it can be at the top. But the entire point of the tab bar navigation is to throw global navigation items at the user and make it easily accessible at the touch of the finger. That's why they're usually at the bottom so you can hold your device and just tap them like so. It's gonna allow you to switch between major areas in your application, usually but it can also be used to filter out galleries or categories. Here's an implementation of a tab bar navigation. You can see those different major global menu icons. And then also, here's another example of it. We've seen it all the time. Why do we see it all the time? Because it works. Before we go too much further, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Loom. Loom is my favorite asynchronous communication tool that I use almost every single day as a designer, as a creative, as a freelancer, and as a business person. With Loom, I can record my screen, I can record from my camera, I can do both at the same time, and I can do walkthroughs, explanations, I can give videos to my clients, to my team, to stakeholders, describing something, and I tell you, a video is worth about a thousand words or maybe for you and me, a thousand minutes, stuck in meetings that you don't need to be in. And you can do that, you can get out of those meetings if you use Loom like me. There's a lot of really cool features and Loom has recently launched kind of some new features like having a dashboard and being able to remove filler words instantly with a click. And so I encourage you, if you wanna save yourself some time, try using Loom, I do it all the time. All right, next pattern of the day is gonna be the tool tip. Tool tips are brief and informative little messages that appear above, below, next to, or around the area in which you've interacted with, usually on hover or while you tap or interact. It shows just a little bit more information than what's provided without it becoming excessive. So just that little bit of extra info to guide the user. Here's an example of a tool tip. Um, as the user hovers over this area, it's gonna expose a little bit of relevant content or information. Here's another one. We see these all the time in design tools or different software applications. Hover over it. I don't want to click on it yet. Tell me what it does before I actually click and commit to this thing. All right, last one for the day is the notification pattern. That's right, notifications, they're usually like little dots that let the user know that there's something there. There's some sort of new activity, there's some sort of new message. You should go check this out. Here's an example of a notification, just a little notification bubble, just a little bub there at the top. And we also have notification bubbles. This one's saying, sometimes when they put them on an avatar, it's showing this person is currently online or present or in sort some sort of state. Here's another example of notifications uh, to the left of the content showing that this might be new. And as soon as we press mark is red, all of those notifications, those little bubbles that annotate that these are new messages, they're all gonna disappear. Notifications can also let people know about errors, activity, or processes that were successful. That's the notification pattern. 
Well, that's it. Those are five more UI design patterns that you can use in your upcoming designs. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification icon so you know when more videos like this one come out. If you have any questions, you can leave those down in the comments and check the description for some helpful links. I hope you are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and using these tried and true patterns in your designs. We'll see you in the next one.